Hello, my name is Jensen Wall and I'm from Denham Springs, Louisiana. This is my first year at Ohio Light and I am currently pursuing a master's degree in performance and literature at the Eastman School of Music. I'll be singing Castle Walls from Franz Lehar's The Mock Marriage. Castle walls, ancient halls, roses blush, fountains gush. What sweet trappings line the path to my lover full of wrath. Right or wrong, I'll be strong, near or far, she's my star. That proud lady filled with scorn will be mine one fine bright morn. It isn't so easy to cope, and many others would fail. But something inside me says, don't lose hope, be brave, and you will prevail. That's why I love life, it's not all sunny skies. Through struggle and strife, just keep eyes on the prize. Castle walls, ancient halls, sweet estate of my mate. I may stumble, I may fall, but I've come to risk it all. Right or wrong, I'll stay strong, near or far, she's my star. Dear proud lady filled with scorn, you'll be mine one fine bright morn. Hello friends, my name is Maggie Langhorn. I'm a soprano originally from Santa Barbara, California and this was to be my first season with the Ohio Light Opera. Uh, my journey to Ohio Light began a little while ago when I began my studies at the nearby Oberlin Conservatory of Music, and later on that same year, when I worked as a vocal company member at the College Light Opera Company in Falmouth, Massachusetts. During my time at both these institutions, I was coming into constant contact with friends, colleagues, uh, directors, who had all made theater with this incredible institution. Um, I even took a trip to the Friedlander Theater last summer and saw performances of Girl Crazy and Into the Woods to support some of my dearest friends. Uh, in my heart, I always knew that Ohio Light was a place for me. And on this journey from admirer to audience member to now young artist, my appreciation for this organization only continues to grow. So while I would have so loved to be performing for and meeting all of you in Worcester this summer, I am grateful and happy to do my part in bringing joy and music to you through this virtual season. Today's a very special day, Miss Grant is our new deputy. That's a brute, and so her suit, and so we take a different route. We should them gather we know to renew our vow. Never more shall we feel birds wrath. Yeah. Yeah. I hear 
Nothing's so good, he's just his little toy. To me, his heart is one big game of poker. His only care is how can he enjoy. You must regard each man with circumspection. You never know just what a man will try. And so we stand together for protection as we sing our battle cry. Down with the men, a battle cry of freedom now and then. A lady has to fight way back when. We used to think we need them, but now we're through with them both day and night.
Malka. He says all the best people are going to jail nowadays. Doctors, lawyers, politicians. Wishful thinking. <laughs> so I'd best be on my way. But, but without your supper, do you Dar think it's wise on an empty stomach? Darling, I don't want to spoil my appetite for, for jail. But aren't you even going to kiss me goodbye? Of course.
my future. And you're getting married. I'm getting what? Not for the world as long as you're mine and mine. Oh, oh, oh. No, it's wrong for irrespect of who you're wife. A good and respectable wife. Agree to 
One can't be vain enough when one is trying to impress the most beautiful woman in Paris. Oh, you set a lively tempo, Baron. And incidentally, I've seen you before. Tonight, first box, stage right. I'm flattered that you noticed me. Your enthusiasm wasn't exactly muted. Mademoiselle Didier, why did that have to be your farewell performance? Because, my dear Baron, I'm leaving the stage to get married. <laughs> but are you marrying for love? Baron, you appear to have one other weakness beside your vanity. You are exceedingly inquisitive. Forgive me. It may appear that I'm inquisitive, but in truth, I'm frightened. Frightened of losing something. Something which you have never possessed? Exactly. Mademoiselle Didier. Angèle, you must believe me when I say to you that I love you as I have never loved any other woman. You must be joking or insane. You must be possible. That word was made for a coward. I despise it. Clearly I realize it. My dream of heaven stands revealed in you. Love for life my heart may Love is yours, whatever I may do. Oh, may this dream be here. 
started, no, once love has started, reach for the stars in the sky. Don't calculate the danger, or love may say a stranger. Don't let your golden chances pass by. Have a care, a dream can be but fleeting. Why beware when love is wildly beating? Love that's born in wandering or of madness. With a dawn may fail your heart and bring but gladness. Love's a star, the foolish mortal sigh for. Just the star that lovers born.
And today I leave you forever. <gasps> but this is quite unaccountable. A keener hand at scuttling a cunada or cutting out a white star never shipped a hand spike. <laughs> yes, I have done my best for you. And why? It was the part of my duty, and I am the slave of duty. As a child, I was regularly apprenticed to your band. It was through an error. No matter, the mistake was ours, not yours, and I was in honor bound by it. An error? What error? Oh, I may not say. It would reflect upon my well-loved Ruth. Nay, dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the canker and tooth of mystery. <laughs> Better have it out at once. <laughs> was a little lad, he grew so brave and daring. <laughs> he saw the thought, he apprenticed him to some career seafaring. I was, alas, his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot to tie and bind this promising boy apprentice to a pilot. <laughs> a life's not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. <laughs> I was a stupid nursery maid on breakers always steering. And I did not catch the word all right through being hard of hearing. Mistaking my instructions, which within my brain did gyrate. I took and bound this promising boy apprentice to a pirate. Ah. A sad mistake it was to Mike and bought him to a pilot. I bought him to a pirate, yo. Instead of to a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster. But I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of heretical maid of all work. And that is how you'll find me now, a member of your shy lot, which you wouldn't have found had he been bound. Apprentice to a pilot. <laughs> Oh, 
I have long pardoned you. The two words were so much alike. They were. They still are. <laughs> Though years have rolled over in their heads. But this afternoon my obligation ceases. Individually, I love you all with an affection unspeakable. Oh. But collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. What? 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 Oh. oh, pity me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that, once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself, heart and soul, to your extermination. Poor lad! Poor lad! Well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel that it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, my boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why. But we don't. I know why. <gasps> oh, but alas, I mustn't tell you. It, uh, why not, it my boy? Be right. It's only half past eleven, and you are one of us until the clock strikes twelve. True, and until then you are bound to protect our interests. Mm. Here, here, here. Well, then it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. <gasps> For instance, you made a point of never attacking a weaker party, and when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. <laughs> there is some truth in that. <laughs> then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. <gasps> of course! We are orphans ourselves and know what it is. Yes, but it is got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture claims he's an orphan. The last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans, and so we had to let them go. <laughs> One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy was recruited solely from her orphan asylums. <laughs> which we know is not the case. But hang it all! You wouldn't have us absolutely merciless! So there's my dilemma. Until twelve I would. After twelve I wouldn't. Oh, was ever a man in so delicate a situation? And Ruth! Your own Ruth, whom you love so well, and who has won her middle-aged way into your boyish heart. What is to become of her? Oh, he shall take you with him. <laughs> Ruth, it is true I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I have seen in that time. I... I think it is a sweet face. It is! <laughs> it is. I say, I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had the opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is just possible that I may be mistaken. True. <laughs> what a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person, only to discover that she is on the whole plane. Oh! Ruth! <laughs> Ruth is, well, very well indeed. <laughs> there are the uh, remains of a fine woman about her. Do you really think so? I do. <laughs> well, then I will not be so selfish as to, as to take her from you. In justice to her and consideration for you, I will leave her behind. No! Oh, Frederick! <laughs> this cannot be. We are rough men! Rough! Who need a rough life? Rough! Rough! <laughs> but we are not so utterly heartless. Rough! 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 We are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying that there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one! No, I thought there wasn't. 
Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. <laughs> you are very good, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's the top of the tide, and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. Once your process of extermination begins, let our deaths be as quick and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will. And by the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by uh, accompanying me back to civilization? No, Frederick. This cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. <laughs> no, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king! <laughs> <laughs> Far to live and die Under the brave black flag I fly Then play a sanctimonious part With a pirate head and a pirate heart <laughs> <laughs> Open to the world going Bye bye! Where pirates all are well to do But I'll be true to the song I sing And live and die a pirate for I am a pirate king, and it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king, you are the lawful pirate king, and it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is for all the pirate king, for all the pirate king. I sally forth to seek my prey. I help myself in a royal way. I think a few more ships is true than a well-bred monarch ought to do. <laughs> but many a king on a first-class throne, if he wants to call his crown his own, must manage somehow to get through more dirty work than ever. I. For I am a pirate king. It is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. You are the lawful pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is the lawful pirate king. The lawful pirate.
night I quit these walls. The thought my soul appalls, but when stern duty calls, I must obey. Must I leave thee here in endless night to dream? Where joy is dark and drear and sorrow all supreme. Turning to lame you, I declare it. It seems so long. <laughs> Swear that till then you'll be true to me. Oh, hey. 
Young Frederick was to have led you to death and glory. That is not a pleasant way of putting it. No matter. He shall not so lead you, for he has allied himself once more with his old associates. He has acted shamefully. You speak falsely. You know nothing about it. He has acted nobly. He has acted nobly. Dearly as I loved him before, his heroic sacrifice to his sense of duty has endeared him to me tenfold. But if it was his duty to constitute himself my foe, then likewise it is my duty to regard him in that light. He has done his duty. I will do mine. Go ye and do yours. Right -o. <laughs> This is perplexing. We, we cannot, cannot understand, understand it at all. all. Still, as he is actuated by a sense of duty, that makes a difference, of course. At the same time, we repeat, we cannot understand it at all. No matter, our course is clear. We must do our best to capture these pirates alone. It is most distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to us all. But we should have thought of that before we joined the force. We should. It is too late now. It is. <laughs> When a felon's not engaged in his employment, his employment, or maturing his felonious little plans, little plans, his capacity for innocent enjoyment, sent enjoyment, is just as great as any honest man's, honest man's. Our feelings we with difficulty smother, difficulty smother. When constabulary duties to be done, to be done, or take one consideration. With another, with another, a policeman's lot is not a happy one. Oh, when 
Constabulary duties to be done, to be done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. Happy one. When the enterprising burglar's not a burgling, not a burgling, when the cutthroat is in talk, you pied in crime, pied in crime. He loves to hear a little brook a gurgling, brook a gurgling, and listen to the merry village chime, village chime. When the coster's finished jumping on his mother, on his mother, he loves to lie a basking in the sun, in the sun. Ah, take a one. In consideration with another, with another, a policeman's lot is not a nappy one. Oh, when constabulary duties to be done, to be done, a policeman's lot is not a nappy one, nappy one.